Welcome back. This is Center Radio COVID-19 edition. This is our 10th um, episode. Um, hello, I'm Dr. Moore, and I'm here today um, with Representative Jim Struzzi um, from the 62nd uh, District here in Pennsylvania. Hello, how are you, Representative Struzzi? I'm doing fine, thank you. Um, great. I want to start right away. Um, a lot has changed since the first time we had you on our show. We thank you for coming back. Um, so um, we want to talk a little bit about SB 613. Um, it's yes. essentially about um, what consists of critical infrastructure. Um, so we know on March 19th, uh, Governor Wolf put out a business, uh, a list of business types um, right. that could continue to operate and then ones that were not considered um, non-essential. Um, and some people since then have felt that this is too restrictive. Um, Bill 613 wants to expand that list um, to the Department of Homeland Security suggestion um, in, a, in a memo from uh, March 19th. Um, can you tell us a little bit, um, a, little, a little bit about uh, SB 613, um, about the list that, uh, that first went out and what you feel should be the list now? Because I know um, 613 is written, of course, in legislative language, and um, not everyone understands what's going on with the with the legislation right now. Well, sure. Yeah. Uh, thank you for this opportunity again. Um, as you said, when, when the governor announced with very little notice that um, all non-essential businesses or non-life-sustaining businesses had to close, it really created a lot of confusion, a lot of concern for people. And, and first of all, you know, let, let's be clear that you know this is a very serious public health crisis. I want to make sure that you know we all agree on that. But the the, the challenge that we face, and, and my office has been inundated with calls from businesses of all all varieties, all, all shapes and sizes, from employees, um, people trying to you know file for unemployment that aren't getting anywhere, people who haven't seen a paycheck for more than a month now. So the concern that we had once the governor rolled out this list, there was all that confusion, and then. You know, the, he implemented the waiver process, and, and that was a suggestion um, through the legislature that you know that, that you can't just blanketly shut down everything. So we implemented the waiver process with the governor's uh, assistance through his administration, and that created even more confusion. I think because you saw you know one business that seemed to be offering the same types of products and services getting a waiver, and another not, and then that created a lot of confusion, some animosity within the community. And the bottom line though, for, from my perspective and from a lot of my colleagues' perspective is there's still people out there that aren't able to collect unemployment, that are not able to feed their families or pay their bills. When in reality, we think that if, if the governor would um, agree to sign uh, Senate Bill 613, which we did pass through the House on Tuesday and through the Senate on Wednesday, that would it, it would create a more uniform uh, allowance for businesses to reopen. You know, as you said, following the, the critical infrastructure uh, guidelines established by by Homeland Security, uh, we and that's what Senate Bill 613 basically says to the governor. You know, we would like you to adhere more to these federal guidelines than the sort of hit or miss guidelines that you put out there for businesses to be closed. We think that's more fair. We think that's more of a common sense approach, and we think that's what the the, the people uh, in our community want. You know, if you can work, and you can allow your business to function following the CDC guidelines, following the proper procedures related to public health, then why shouldn't you be allowed to reopen and you know, allow some people to get back to work, allow the community to access the products and services? We have to have a plan to get our economy back on track, to get our society back on track. And we think this is a good step forward to do that. Are you concerned that many places that are currently open um, that workers are not wearing any type of face mask um, um, whenever they're interacting with customers or any of the PPE um, that, that has now been recommended from our own um, uh, um, health officials here right. in Pennsylvania. Um, do you think that has anything to do with uh, some of the backlash maybe with you know people that don't want things to open up right now? You know, how, how do you feel about that? Um, and what, what, what do you think we can do about that right now? 
Well, I think that's that's part of the the, the confusion and, and miscommunication, perhaps, is not everything is going to reopen. This this is following the strict guidelines of Homeland Security, you know, based on the recommendations of the CDC. It's businesses that can that can practice, you know, safe social distancing in the workplace that can provide the proper PPE, the, the personal protective equipment. It's not going to allow everything to reopen. It's still going to adhere to some strict guidelines. But it will allow those businesses that it seems to make no sense why they're closed in the first place. So I think that's, you know, it, obviously, as I said earlier, so well, there's there we have to be very cognizant of the public health concerns and, and continue to follow the direction of the, you know, the Pennsylvania Department of Health and those who are experts uh, on disease control. And with that said, though, the, the governor has implemented one of the, the most strict closure policies in, in the nation right now. You know, even some of our adjacent adjacent states have things open. Um, we're hearing stories. Stories you probably we won't hear them in Indiana County, but from some of my colleagues from other parts of the state, you know, there's people leaving the state to work in in other states right now, even though they have the same level, if not a, a higher level of COVID cases. They're leaving Pennsylvania to go work elsewhere because they're allowed. They're going to Pennsylvania to buy cars because you can't buy them in Pennsylvania right now. So we're losing a lot of, of tax revenue right now simply because the governor has one of the most strict closure policies in the nation. So we are just trying to level the playing field. Um, again, cognizant of the health con concerns and, and making sure that every proper procedure is followed. But we think this, this is a common sense approach to allow businesses that can reopen and people that can work safely to do that. Um, unemployment claims. I, I was on a conference call yesterday with the Department of Labor and Industry. 1.4 million unemployment compensation claims right now. Um, and they are way behind in filling those claims. Uh, at, the, at this point, um, they're not even answering the phones of labor and industry to take claims. It has to all be done on the internet. So with that said, people need money. They need to be able to provide for their families. They need to pay their bills. We think this common sense approach will allow that to occur while still maintaining the proper safety procedures uh, to prevent the spread of COVID. So what type of businesses have you heard um, or do you believe um, with you and your colleagues um, that are closed now that you feel could be open and still provide um, the protection needed for the general community? Well, I think small businesses, businesses um, with 10 or fewer employees that would adhere or, or within the CDC guidelines. As I said, auto dealers who can do online sales, perhaps, or one-on-one -on -one sales consultations. Definitely home construction and commercial construction because uh, many of those workers are outside already basically practicing social distancing in the workplace. Um, a lot of real estate transactions I think could occur because they are typically with you know two or three people uh, in a room perhaps. Uh, a, a lot of uh, point of contact sales where you have you know just a minor interaction a small business that maybe has one or two employees in the building at a particular time. Those types of businesses where, you know, when this, uh, when the governor first put the list out where people were scratching their heads saying, why, why can't I be open? I have myself and one other employee in the office, yet they're still closed. Those types of things where it really didn't make any sense in the first place, we think those should be allowed, provided again that they adhere to the, the CDC guidelines for for safe social distancing, safe workplaces, and the proper PPE equipment when necessary. We feel that they should be allowed to reopen. We have to get our economy back on track. The longer this goes on, the harder it's gonna be for us to recover. And you have to think of the implications of um, all the, the domestic and social issues that can come from that, the mental health issues. People are extremely stressed right now. And you, you add to that you know, the fact that you can't pay your bills, you can't feed your family, you have to worry about the long-term mental health implications of that, of this, what's happening right now. So we have to have some steps forward to show people that there is hope, that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And I think there is, and I think Senate Bill 613 will help get us in that direction. So um, if the bill does, does pass and it's vetoed, or if it doesn't pass, because I think it's gone to the Senate, correct? It's passed the Senate yesterday. It's, 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 it was... Yeah, the Speaker of the House signed it today, and it's on the governor's desk for his approval or his veto. Um, so if it does, if he vetoes it, um, how how do you and your colleagues on both sides of the aisle um, plan on trying to find a bipartisan compromise 
um, so that uh, the gray area can lessen between what's considered restrictive and right. what's considered non-restrictive. Well, I, I think there's there's a number of other bills out there that are designed to to uh, sort of carry this forward, even if the if the blanket you know, approach to enlist the CISA guidelines for businesses. Uh, if the governor decides to veto that, um, there are a, a list of other bills more specific to a particular industry that we would move forward, at least to try and give some relief to, to different types of, of industry sectors. Some of the ones that I mentioned, uh, auto dealers, construction, those types of things. I, I really hope that the governor gives this a lot of thought. And, and I think a lot of this is, is more, we want to work with the governor on these things. We want to work, as you said, in a bipartisan fashion to help Pennsylvania. I mean, that's what this is about. It's about helping Pennsylvania families survive this, this serious this crisis that is historical and hopefully only once in our lifetime. And so um, if, if he does veto uh, Senate Bill 613, um, we're going to continue to push forward and try and move additional legislation that will at least help certain industry sectors. Great. Um, can you tell me how testing is um, or what happens with testing as businesses reopen? Um, I know that they're talking about getting, um, if I heard correctly, a, a team um, together now um, to decide how to roll out reopening uh, the community back up over time. Um, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about the testing or there's, they keep saying there's three things specifically that we need to do in order for that to happen. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about that? Well, last week we passed legislation to, to create the, the COVID task force in Pennsylvania. And that would, would be, you know, a bipartisan group comprised of the House and Senate, the, the governor's office, the Department of Health, everyone working together to come up with a, 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 a plan to get us from here, uh, you know, through the crisis and back on track as, as, a, as a, a functioning society with the stable economy. Related to testing, I know that I, I, I get an update daily from Steve Wolf with Indiana Regional Medical Center. I've not heard of, of any issues with testing here locally. I know that they're trying to be uh, careful to only administer the test when someone is exhibiting symptoms. Um, and I, I do understand that they are, are um, starting to do some drive-through testing opportunities for people pre-registered that may have some symptoms. Uh, but I have not heard of any issues here locally. I think a lot of people um, sort of when they hear there's not enough tests, I, I think that the, the medical professionals are trying to be careful that not everyone needs tests, right? If you don't have any symptoms, you're, you really don't need to be tested. And I think that's sort of the, the, the misnomer perhaps, but I, I, I do think we're fine here in Indiana, at least in Indiana County related to testing right now. Okay, great. Um, I guess to just to wrap up a little bit, um, I know that you said that there's other bills that are coming along. Um, I know that um, we have a guest here to talk a little bit about the small business um, right. loan. But it seems as though we're hearing that it's running out of money. People are having a tough time right now with that. Do you want to talk a little bit about that right now? Sure. I, I was on a conference call this afternoon with Congressman Thompson, and I do think, and, and I know that uh, Dave will probably talk a little bit more about the, the small business loans. I think, you know, they will find a way to put more money and make more money available for small businesses. I don't think that's a concern. And I, I, I think as you as we work through this process, none of these pieces of legislation, even the money that we allocated two weeks ago for $50 million in state funds for personal protective equipment for our hospitals, the emergency responders, that wasn't considered to be a one time fix. You know, we realize as this crisis continues, we're going to have to pass additional additional bills to put more funding where it's needed to con combat this crisis. So I, I think you'll you'll see moving forward that additional bills continue to, to be rolled out to to provide funding where it's needed. We're, we're looking at bills and some of them passed this week as well to to give relief to senior citizens related to property taxes. Um, to give relief to, to um, volunteer firefighters with some, some um, tax credits, um, funding for EMS, funding for our fire departments. Fire departments aren't getting any grants right now, particularly uh, volunteer fire companies. And, you know, a lot of their money, a lot of their funding for the year comes from their spring fundraisers that they can't have right now. So I've heard from a lot of firefighters um, and, and volunteer fire companies and Citizens Ambulance, their concerns for funding. So we're looking at some bills next week. They will hopefully move to try and provide some funding for those critical areas 
obviously, as I mentioned, you know, I, I, I um, get a correspondence daily from Steve Wolf with the hospital, uh, trying to make sure that, that they have all the resources that they need. So as we continue to move forward, you know, that's why it's important that, that myself and my colleagues go to Harrisburg and that the U.S. Senate and U.S. representatives are in, in Washington because this is a, an ongoing crisis. And, you know, every week we have to be able to pass legislation to provide funding to meet those needs. And that's what we're trying to do. Uh, and there, there's, there's all sorts of different facets that come with this that a lot of people don't think about, you know, in your daily lives. And, and that's what we're trying to do is address all those issues from a, a larger perspective, while also making sure that, that every individual has what they need to survive this crisis. And, and I think that's really the, the message that's out there that I want people to know is we're working very hard behind the scenes every day to try and come up with legislation to ease the burden on families, to ease the burden on our communities, and to try and and help everyone get through this together so that on the other side of it, we are still a strong functioning society. Okay, wonderful. Um, is there anything else you'd like to let every, anyone know out there uh, as far as where we're headed, um, plans uh, that our state legislation has for the future? Um, just anything that you want the general public to know at all? Well, I, I want people to stay positive. Uh, I want everyone to know, I, I think we are gonna see the light at the end of the tunnel here very soon. Um, we're going to have to start talking about a state budget at some point, um, but our, our, our focus right now as a legislature is to get through this COVID crisis. Ample resources are available on my website. I'd encourage people to go to the Department of Health website. Um, related to unemployment, that has been one of the top things that we've been hearing about um, in in our offices, you know, how do I file an unemployment claim? Why am I not getting paid right now? Why are there, the delay is there? It, Labor and industry, they're overwhelmed with unemployment compensation claims right now. Um, they're hiring more people, they're bringing back annuitants to try and meet those needs, but the best thing you can do to apply for unemployment is to go on the website. Don't call them, go on their website and apply and they'll try to get to you as quickly as we, they can. And as always, my office and my staff are there to help. So you can call our office at 724-465-0220 or go to my website. And of course, follow us on Facebook because we are uh, updating our Facebook page as soon as we get new information to share. Wonderful. Thank you so much for uh, spending uh, time with us today um, to let the general public know about what's going on and some of the legislation that is being passed. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.